Serious. Hello, scientists. What's a scary science fact that the public knows nothing about? There's a gravitational anomaly in space called the Great Attractor, which is pulling everything within the Virgo and Hydra Centaurus superclusters towards it. It lies 150 to 250 million light years from the Milky Way, which itself is being pulled towards it, too. The scary part is that, relative to us, this anomaly lies within the same plane as our own galaxy, making it very difficult to observe. Essentially, we have almost no concrete idea of what it is. On the flip side of the Great Attractor is the Boötes Void, which I find a bit creepy. The Boötes Void, sometimes called the Great Void, is a huge spherical region of space that contains very few galaxies. It's approximately 700 million light years from Earth and located near the constellation Boötes, which is how it got its name. The Supervoid measures 250 million light years in diameter, representing approximately 0.27% of the diameter of the observable universe, which itself is a daunting 93 billion light years across. Its volume is estimated at 236,000 MCP3, making it the largest known void in the universe. At first, astronomers were only able to find eight galaxies across the expanse, but further observations revealed a total of 60 galaxies. Now, while that might still seem like a lot, it would be like stumbling upon only 60 objects across a region larger than the continental United States, and that's just in two dimensions. According to astronomer Greg Aldering, the scale of the void is such that if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boötes void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies until the 1960s. Looking at the volume of the Boötes Void, it should contain about 10,000 galaxies when considering that the average distance between galaxies elsewhere in the universe is a few million light years. But the question is, why and how this void came to be? There hasn't been enough time since the universe began for mere gravitational forces to clear out a space of that size. There's a theory that suggests that supervoids are caused by the intermingling of smaller mini-voids like soap bubbles coming together. But a more, maybe creepier explanation is that the Boötes Void could be the result of an expanding Kardashev III scale civilization. As the colonization bubble expands outward from its home system, the civilization dims each star and subsequently each galaxy it encounters by blanketing it in a Dyson shell. This might also explain why the void has such a nice spherical shape. Oh, and we are seeing a snapshot of the void 700 million years ago. A lot could have happened in 700 million years that we just cannot see or know due to the inherent speed of light. Sweet dreams, everyone. If your dog swims in a lake after receiving a spot-on flea treatment, it absolutely decimates the invertebrate population. A large dog swimming in eight Olympic swimming pools worth of water soon after treatment will leach enough neurotoxin to kill 50% of the lake's invertebrate population within 48 hours. There's some awareness of this, but it's not being taken seriously enough. Scientific literature conclusion on Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases in general is that the diseases start decades before first obvious symptoms, and that we need to treat them at this stage. When you exhibit obvious symptoms, it's too late. Your brain is already mush. If you get diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 65, you had the disease since your early 40s at least. And you experienced very mild symptoms but didn't notice it. And your brain fought like hell to compensate for the deficit. When you get diagnosed, your brain is already severely damaged and will never recover from the deficit. Cancer geneticist here. Most cases of cancer that are sequenced generally just denote the prognosis or how long a patient has to live, rather than treatment options. People always say, let's cure cancer, however, this simplifies cancer as though it's only one disease. It's far more complicated than that. I studied at one of the largest cancer hospitals in the world, where the motto is to make cancer history, but the only obtainable goal is to make it chronic. We study and research as much as possible, but every cancer requires different research and, unfortunately, the powers that be often prohibit funding and proficient research. It's work I am passionate about, but also a broken system that is infuriating to work in. In the UK, about 17% of people have fetal alcohol syndrome, Maguire et al., 1992. 
as much as 17% of us are developmentally disabled simply because, prior to the late 90s, a large proportion of British mothers drank during pregnancy, 41%. Thankfully, the prevalence rate has been falling fast since the late 90s when all this research was published, but it's terrifying to see how much of an effect FASD is having on society. The Cascadia Subduction Zone CSZ, runs off the coast of Northern California to Southern Canada and ruptures about every 250 to 350 years. We know this from geologic record. The last rupture was in January 1700, and there are written records from Japan of a tsunami that resulted from the earthquake on the other side of the Pacific. The zone is still active and is likely to rupture in the next 100 years, resulting in a Mag 9 plus earthquake that impacts the west coast from Northern Cali to Southern Canada. I haven't seen this one yet. Insects are going extinct. We've lost a significant chunk just since the 80s. I think it was around 20%. Mozzies are going up because of course, but just about everything else is going. It wasn't until I read this that I realized that as a kid in the 90s, I used to see butterflies all the time. Dragonflies. My house used to get invaded by Christmas beetles every year. Not so much. These days, I might see only one or two Christmas beetles in December, if any at all. When I was a kid, I remember finding eight in my house in a single night. Same house. Prions. Misfolded proteins that caused a cascade of protein misfolding that led to amyloid plaque buildups, resulting in uncontrollable neurodegeneration that is fatal in 100% of cases within two years. There is no cure. We don't understand what causes it. We don't understand the mechanism of the misfolding cascade. We don't even fully understand the structure of the misfolded proteins. It could, in theory, happen to anyone at any time, and there's no way to tell until you start showing symptoms, at which point you might have 18 months to live if you're lucky, the last six of which will be intensely unpleasant. I don't know if I'd call it science per se, or call myself a scientist, lol, but I'm a former funeral director, and one of the first things you learn in your actual funeral sciences class is that people over a certain body fat percentage will start a literal grease fire in your crematory oven if you don't bake them at the proper temp and duration. Cold start, low and slow, is key. Everyone knows about scurvy, but the reason it's so terrifying is usually less known. You see, scar tissue is not permanent. The process to build and maintain scar tissue is constantly ongoing. When you become vitamin C deficient, your scar tissue starts being reabsorbed by your body, opening up any and all old wounds. If you have ever had surgery, those internal incisions will open back up. Fortunately, it doesn't take a lot of vitamin C and it's abundant in our food sources, but it's still a little creepy that you could just start falling apart without it. Soil science adjacent researcher here. We are degrading, polluting, and losing our topsoil at such a rate that we may not be able to produce enough food to feed everyone within 50 to 60 years, let alone what impacts climate change may bring to bear on our food supply. And the US government's crop insurance programs and incentives all reinforce the bad practices while discouraging regenerative practices. These bad policies are extremely hard to change because of lobbying from the major agribusiness companies who make money off of these short-sighted policies. Our food supply is further threatened by our agricultural overdependence on aquifer water, which is not being replenished, making it an unsustainable source of water. If the aquifers are overdrawn, depleted, or polluted, we hit a hard wall of water scarcity, and we will have no backups to address the problem with. The drawdown of the aquifers also causes land subsidence, which causes costly infrastructure and building damage. The general public does not realize the impending crisis that will be caused by the confluence of these factors. Here are a few scary medical science facts regarding CPR that you won't often hear in your first aid slash CPR class put on in school. I only learned this stuff after schooling to become an EMT. What's the success rate of CPR? The average person assumes 75% or greater. In reality, it's barely 10%. It's one of the first things they told us in training because all new people have way too high of an expectation to the effectiveness of CPR. It can be very depressing when you're doing everything you were trained and aren't getting the results you think you should be getting. 
The time from collapse to the administration of a shock via AED is absolutely paramount. They say the chances of survival drop 10% per minute. Oh, and rescue breaths? If you're not very, and I mean very careful, you'll cause gastric dissension. You'll literally be blowing up their stomach and they will vomit. Then there's the cracks and crackles. If done right, it'll sound and feel like you're breaking every rib in little old lady Nelson's chest. You're likely not, it's cartilage and other bits shifting. Although if you're a bit too vigorous, you may very well break a rib or two. But hey, they're already dead, so it doesn't matter. They'd rather be alive with a broken rib than dead. If you live in the Netherlands and your house is older than, let's say, 100 years and you have not renovated your plumbing, chances are fairly high that you can get lead poisoning. It is impossible for water treatment companies to pin where they are and how many, and many buildings' plans do not include the plumbing schematics. So check your pipes for lead. They can do harm, especially to children. Most cosmetic items that say they contain ingredients like different plant extracts have just enough to say that it's in there, but not enough to actually help you. Like a few grams in a batch that's a couple of thousand gallons. If it isn't an FDA-regulated component, like for example salicylic acid in a shampoo for people with dandruff, there's literally nothing stopping companies from putting virtually undetectable amounts of ingredients into stuff just to be able to say it's there. There's a solar event known as a CME, or a coronal mass ejection. It occurs very frequently on a cosmic timescale. Every few decades to centuries, there's a decent-sized one. Why are they scary? Acme is a massive burst of radiation, easily able to fully envelop the Earth in its path, and it's the equivalent of a non-stop EMP barrage. The last time a big one hit Earth was when we had telegraph lines for communications and they spontaneously caught fire. In today's world, with everything running on electricity, when the next big one hits, we'll have at most a few days warning and it'll be a literal apocalypse movie scenario. With planes going down due to the whole electrical system frying, nobody's vehicle starting, untold billions and fire damage would wreak havoc everywhere, and the machines we depend on to help would be similarly fried. Some stuff would be unaffected, being parked in deep, concrete, roofed parking garages and the like, but our entire infrastructure would be useless for years. It'd literally send us into a mini dark age while people tried to get things working again. Recovery would take decades to centuries. Antibiotics have been abused and misused for so long that various bacteria strains have started to get resistance to them. What used to be a treatable infection might soon become deadly because we are unable to treat it with the antibiotics we have today. There is research to try and find other ways to treat antibiotic-resistant bacteria, but until then, please use prescribed antibiotics until they are finished, not until you feel better. If unused, do not flush them down the toilet or put them in the bin. Give it to a pharmacy so they can discard them correctly and use antibiotics when necessary. Some countries will give them willy-nilly while others are more conservative. Humans rely on evaporating sweat to stay cool. If humidity gets too high, relatively low heat can kill humans. The equivalent of 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius at 100% relative humidity can kill even healthy humans. This is called a wet bulb effect. By 2050, scientists predict multiple wet bulb events in the North China Plain. Approximately 400 million people live in the North China Plain. The human genome is riddled with mutations. Some were passed down from your parents, some occurred during DNA replication, and others as a result of DNA damage from the environment, smoking, UV light, etc. Most of these mutations are harmless. Some will be repaired, some won't. But others will be in cancer suppressor genes or oncogenes. In fact, you may have cancerous cells growing in your body right now. Application Security Engineer here. I know that cybersecurity is not the science most people were probably hoping for, but I have some fun facts about your data. For starters, Facebook builds shadow profiles of people, so even if you don't have a Facebook, you do. Facebook collects your data from many, many sites you visit. If you see a like slash share button on Facebook, they're collecting the data and adding it to the shadow profile. They basically stalk you from seeing how long you're on a web page to what you click. 
This is usually used for advertising purposes, but was also used for nefarious purposes as seen with Cambridge Analytica. Secondly, in many countries, namely the US, your data is for sale. From voter records to your address and the people you live with, each US state has their own laws about selling voter data, but for example, North Carolina allows you to download all the voter data for free. The voter data included is full name, address, voter ID, phone number, race slash ethnicity, gender, where you were born, when you were born, county, age, driver's license number, and more. We wanted to see how accurate this could be and used Florida voter data to check my stepfather's information. It gave us his current address, voter ID, full name, phone number, and what party he voted for in 2020. It was also all accurate. Third, with breaches like the one we saw with Facebook, people can cross-reference your information and find you easily. If you think about it, this could lead to extreme terrorism from people who don't agree with you politically, which is pretty scary. Finally, if you toss in a website like White Pages, they can cross-reference this information to find friends, family, previous numbers, addresses, and sometimes emails of you and your loved ones. And all this information is protected only by a paywall. If they want to really get into the OSINT of this, they can look for breaches on your email or number in database dumps on sites like dehashed.com and could even potentially take over your accounts. Some breaches might even include hacked voter data which straight up leaks your social security number. Botox is made from the botulinum toxin. This toxin is produced by the bacterium Clostridium botulinum and is considered to be one of the most poisonous, lethal substances known to mankind. The toxin is a neurotoxin that blocks nerve signals to muscles. Consequently, it prevents muscles injected with Botox from contracting, tensing, so they become weak or paralyzed, thus improving the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines. Fortunately though, Botox is only injected in small targeted doses and is considered extremely safe as long as it's made and provided by a licensed professional. The original nuclear bombs leveled the cities they detonated over, yet are considered puny by today's standards. The most powerful nuclear bomb ever created, the Sarboma, had an explosive yield 3,000 times more powerful than the original nuclear bombs and its power was calculated to be more than 10 times the combined power of every single munition used in World War II. That includes every bullet fired, every grenade thrown, every artillery shell fired, every bomb dropped, and of course, the two nuclear bombs dropped. It was detonated four kilometers from the ground over the remote Cerveny Island, yet still completely destroyed towns within a couple of hundred kilometers of the blast and broke windows as far away as Copenhagen, Denmark. The shockwave from the blast circled the globe nine times. The plane that dropped it was given a 50-50 chance of survival. Yet, the bomb was originally designed to be twice as powerful. Our food is becoming less nutritious. Plants take in CO2 gas and convert that into carbohydrates through photosynthesis. The increase in atmospheric CO2 concentration we have caused means that plants are producing more carbohydrates, sugars, and structural carbs like cellulose. However, the mineral, micronutrient, and protein content of plants is not increasing. Plants today contain more carbs than plants 100 years ago, generally. This may be a contributing factor to the obesity epidemic since more total calories need to be consumed in order to reach total nutrient requirements. Physical Oceanography the world's climate is driven by the meridional overturning circulation, what you might have heard of as the global conveyor belt. Essentially, this is the formation of cold and salty deep water masses near the poles, North Atlantic, Antarctica, that sinks to the bottom of the oceans, which then upwells in regions like the Indian Ocean and the subtropical Pacific. No deep water formation, no upwelling. No deep water formation, no movement of heat on a large scale, theoretically, in the oceans. The heat capacity of the oceans is orders of magnitude greater than that of the atmosphere. If that heat isn't moving around, the world's climate rapidly changes. Thanks to the melting of the Greenland ice sheet, there's going to be a lot fresher water in the North Atlantic. No salty water, no deep water formation. No deep water formation, no conveyor belt. No conveyor belt, no Gulf Stream, or anything else driven by geostrophic motion. Climate 
apocalypse. I work in the oil industry, and H2S is scary. The gas is produced as a result of the microbial breakdown of organic materials in the absence of oxygen. Colorless, flammable, poisonous, and corrosive, H2S gas is noticeable by its rotten egg smell. But the scary thing is that in huge concentrations, your ability to smell it can vanish instantly, and you won't notice you're dying until you just fall over dead. There have been occasions when people working in sewers have encountered it and died. Then, when co-workers went to check on them, they died too and created a chain of about five to six people going to check on previous people and dying. I wear a H2S monitor at all times, and if it beeps, I look at it and evacuate the area. If it's under 60 parts per million, I walk. If it's over 60 parts per million, I run. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.